Welcome to Mid-American Gardener. I'm your host, Tanisha Spain, and we've got a lot to cover today. We're going to go visit our old friend, Mathis Helmick at Plant Mode in Champaign. He's going to show us all around his new store. But first, joining me in the studio to talk about foraging and plant shopping and just a lot of stuff is our, our pal Ella Maxwell here. So introduce yourself before we get started and tell everyone a little bit about you. Um, I'm Ella Maxwell. I'm a master gardener and a horticulturist, and uh, I enjoy a large yard and gardening mostly with perennials and trees and shrubs. All right, sounds good. So you brought some things in today. You've been getting into foraging. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Um, uh, there is a foraging group in central Illinois that, that has monthly meetings. I haven't really been able to make that many of them, but the whole idea is, is that there is so much out in our landscape and in our yard that we can take advantage of, and I'm always up for trying mm -hmm. something new. Now, does that always have to be um, food, or are we talking medicines? Are we talking, what exactly is foraging? Are you looking for things to eat? Well, I guess it depends on, on really what what you want these plants to benefit you how. So okay. there are people that uh, certainly forage for like ginseng yes. and you know different medicinal type plants, mm -hmm. um, but I was more of the food aspect of it all, trying a few different things and, and I have and, and um, it's, it's interesting. I read about something in a book and then I want to go mm -hmm find it or try it or or okay. whatever. So what's this one? Tell us well, a about Well, this one right here, I brought in um, the berries from a an amelanchier. That's its botanical name, but it's commonly known as a service berry. Mm -hmm. And um, it is a native Illinois or a native North American tree. And um, there are several different species, but it has a beautiful white flower and it's really mostly grown for its ornamental characteristics. Um, good fall color, uh, it's a well-behaved, small, many times multi-stem tree. Um, and again, the white flowers, but they make an edible fruit. Oh, don't and mind if so, I do. And <laughs> so, uh, it is, uh, people describe it as blueberry-esque. Mm -hmm. Texture and flavor. Texture and flavor. Mm -hmm. And so, um, when these are ripe, you can collect them. And uh, my friend Karen and I did, and we had a recipe to make service berry uh, jam. And here it is. Right. And so it took um, sugar, a little lemon juice, uh, the, the washed okay. berries, and you're going to then process this and then you can, depending on how much you make, you can then put it through a hot water bath for about 10 minutes mm -hmm. in um, the jars and they'll seal and you can keep it. Now, she made it with the full berry, um, which is somewhat seedy, I've okay. found. Yep, I can see um, some and seeds And you in can here. see the seeds, but she likes the texture mm -hmm. of the, the fruit. I put it through a, um, through a strainer and just um, made more of a jelly than, mm -hmm. than a jam. But it's uh, delicious. It is good, I've had some. <laughs> and um, definitely something that you can uh, put on toast. Um, you know, it can be- A nice be... roll, a nice hot roll. Oh yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, even, you know, peanut butter and a jelly. There we go. Kind of thing. But there are so many other trees out there that have edible fruit that we don't think about. Of course, uh, this year I did uh, harvest uh, sour cherries. Those okay. are now ripe and um, I've done those. But another one that I brought in that I wanted to share for foraging is this is a dogwood. This is the fruit of cornus moss or carnelian cherry dogwood. And these fruits will um, ripen towards the beginning of August. So they'll at least double in size. They turn just a beautiful uh, scarlet red. I was gonna ask. And they... they do have a rather large pit, but um, it is again something that's attractive to the birds. The service berry were attractive to birds. They're attractive to us. So um, 
Uh, the way that I harvest these is a little bit different. Um, you know they're ripe when they drop off. Okay. And there's so many of them, you know, the birds can't eat them all. I lay out a, um, like an old sheet under the tree and then I might shake the tree, but That's a really good I idea. let it drop. I let them just drop onto the, uh, onto the sheet and then I'll, I'll harvest them that way. And again, I will cook them up with sugar and then again, um, because they're difficult to pit, I'll put them through a strainer just gotcha. to get the pulp and the, the good flavor. And I've made um, jam with crab apples. Mm -hmm. um, I tried making something with black walnuts. Oh, they have a very strong taste. You can make, you can pickle the immature nuts. Really? Yes, it's a British delicacy. Really? Yes, but you want to use English walnuts, which are a little different than our okay. American black walnut. Uh, it didn't work out. I also, the Italians make a walnut liqueur. Mm -hmm. And so I try. I tried that as well. Well, you know, you've come to my house for I have. for maple yes. syrup. Yeah, if it's food related, I'm going to try give it a it. shot. Yeah. Awesome. Well, so that's some of the foraging ideas. Um, enjoy. Excellent. Well, thank you so much garden. for bringing these in and uh, give these a shot out in your yard if you've got some of these things. Now, do you? What do you use to forage? Is there a handbook or you know what do you? What's your guide? Oh, there's several different ones, and I I'm sorry I should have brought one with me this. Uh, today, but um, you can just go to the library or you can go online and mm -hmm. just um, uh, put in foraging books. I'm sure you'll find all kinds of things, but there's some for different areas of the country. There's different ones specific to like mushrooms. Oh, nice. Um, you can get really specific on what you're oh, sure. looking for. Oh, sure. Yes. Excellent. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Ella. Well, thank you. All right. And now we're going to, as promised, we're going to go visit our friend Mathis Helmick at Plant Mode in Champaign and take a tour of his new shop. Well, hey there, plant people. Summer is in full swing, and that means most of us are probably paying more attention to our outdoor plants, but you can't forget about those indoor house plants. And for that, we're gonna pay a visit to our old friend, Mathis Helmick at Plant Mode. He's got a new shop, everything is beautiful inside, and he agreed to give us a tour. So let's go in and take a look. All right, we've made our way inside to Plant Mode, the new Plant Mode. Yeah, First of all, thanks so much for having us. Mathis Helmick, the owner of Plant Mode in Champaign, and this is a new spot. It is, I moved over here in February and I love it. Lots of room. I was gonna say, this is a lot bigger space than you have before. It's gotta be about three times as, as large. I two bathrooms, a back room. I don't even know what to do. Oh, wow. So yeah. much space you don't know what to do with it all. No, just fill it with plants. There you go. So yeah. tell us a little bit about your space. Show us around. Uh, what's different about where you are now? What's well, different other than space? Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of got the same, to me, the same kind of funky raw feel as the other building. Um, kind of an unfinished vibe. I, because I moved in so fast, like the floors are a little weird. The wall's not finished on that side. The HVAC's a little strange but we're just gonna make it work. Just and uh, work. I just hodgepodge and piece things together to uh, try to put a little bit of my flavor in here with Excellent. plants, obviously. So tell us a little bit about the variety that you've got right now. Do you have a different sort of stock in the, depending on the season? Not really. No? Other than there being a small amount of herbs in the back that I usually drag outside every day because I'm like, it's spring and it's summer, here's basil. And I always overbuy and it's <laughs> always kind of still around in July. Other than that, it's tropical plants. That's sort of my focus. Mm -hmm. There's always going to be a small amount of succulents and a couple big cacti. Planters aren't really my thing, but I have some planters. Kind of uh, goes with the gig. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just, I just want to concentrate on getting people plants awesome. and just having plants. Are people still riding the plant wave? Uh, they are. There's awesome. been definitely a little bit of a dip. Um, I'm experiencing my first summer of the typical Champaign-Urbana UIUC at summertime slowdown. Ah. And that's fine, but we didn't have that over the last three summers. So that feels a little different, but I know people are definitely still coming in sure. and uh, everything's going pretty good so far. Awesome, all right, well show us around. Show all us right. some, of the, ah. some of the faves in here. Sure, sure, sure. Well, one of my favorites is this uh, big old Norfolk Island pine. This nice. was actually donated to me from some good clients that were moving away and they were like, you can keep it in the store. It can be your, a feature plant. You can also sell it, we don't care. So I got rent to pay, it's for sale. <laughs> 
This is one of my favorite plants too. Yeah, I, I love, love these it. guys. I like them really tiny and yes. I like them really large. And sometimes that medium size can be a little sloppy looking. A little looking. lanky and yeah. yeah, agreed. But there's really just a bunch of the same old awesome plants. A couple big old fiddles are always here. You're gonna laugh at me. I can't pronounce this. All right, give it a shot. All right, no, I'm not even gonna You're try. You're not even gonna it. try for the children? Apollobalus acumenatissima. <laughs> we'll get one of the panelists on it. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So we'll, that'll be a little little backroom editing or whatever. <laughs> but um, this is my, my kind of, at the moment, only sunny spot. So in the morning until about mm, 1030 or so, it's pretty sunny. Mm -hmm. um, once I sign a lease, which will happen next month, the awning will come down. So there'll be a little more light in here. But I love the front and I love putting the window together. It looks really pretty at night and a lot of people message me about that or when they come in on the weekend after maybe they had dinner you know at seven saints or something mm -hmm. on us on a wednesday night there's a bunch of face prints and hand prints in the windows <laughs> and people going i'm coming back for that yeah yeah my, that my logo projects because of the light onto the sidewalk so people send me pictures of that mm -hmm. so uh, it's almost like this is my uh, just welcome to plant mode fishbowl visual kind of vibe. Very nice. So just the front of the shop. This yeah. is really neat too. I was admiring this one when we came in. Yeah, Crypanthus. And what's funny is they have all these cute little nicknames like this is Elaine. This Aww. is Zero. This green one here is Betty. Betty. Yeah, these are related to pineapples. Um, Bromeliads. Cool. Bromeliads. Yeah. Got kind of a little serrated sharp edge. It won't cut you or anything, but it's not that friendly. It's gotcha. pretty, pretty fun gotcha. stuff. Uh, Oh yeah, yeah, check the leaves on this uh, Ficus Audrey. It's basically like a, a non-smooth rubber tree in a sense. Uh, a lot tougher than, uh, you know, Altissimas are. Ficus Altissima, but I really love that plant. That is gorgeous. Uh, little middle table here, hanging stuff, obviously. When I worked at Sprout Home, we used to hang things from any little thing we could, so. I think when this was Baccaro, they used to have some fabric here that looped across oh. these and it would uh, sort of absorb sound. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, ooh, place to hang plants. I remember last time we chatted, you said folks were coming in with some rare plants they were hoping you could get your hands on. Yeah. Is that still happening? That's still a thing. The appetite is still there. It's still huh? a thing. Uh, Thai Constellations and the Alba Monsteras, I'm still like not sourcing those because I'm just like, it's right around the corner from them being at a big box store. I can get them from places. They just cost so much that I just, I'm just sort of not interested. Yeah. You know? Yeah. There's, Understood. There's, people can get that stuff. This is my little planter section. These are locally made right over near Eisner Park oh, by nice. my friend Alan Strong Jr. His company is Stronghaven Design. So we sell out of these about every two weeks. He just brings me 20 at a time. Mm -hmm. They're made from uh, concrete and recycled uh, plastic pellets. So they have a lightness to them. I wasn't expecting it to be that light when I yep. picked it up. It looks like it's really I often good. see people be like, it's lighter than I thought. It's lighter you. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. uh, I love, always going to love the Rapa Fedora Tetraspermas. Yes. Great climbers. That's one of the reasons I leaned them against the wall to sort of show people mm -hmm. like you're going to want a moss pole or something. Oh, what are these guys? Is this an air plant? Yeah, that's a Zero Graphica. Yeah, Zero Graphica fasciculata. Um, Zero Graphicas usually come out and curve under very tightly this mm -hmm. this variety stays a little more wide and you just missed you soak it you submerge soak. it and soak it in water about every five days especially if it's like air conditioning mm -hmm. or in the fall and winter when the heat's on you got to submerge it for at least 30 minutes then you grab it by the section you're holding it by mm -hmm. which i call this little butt turn it upside <laughs> down you give it some shakes to get excess water out of all these little crevices because uh -huh. if we just pulled it you mind if i hold that yeah, sure Go if we it. just pulled it out of the water dripping and just displayed mm -hmm. it that excess water falls into those little cups and if it sits there for like a couple of days you go to pick it up and it falls apart because it kind of rotted gotcha so we just give it a shake, shake it out some people even set them upside down for like 10 20 minutes and then back on the shelf or yep. wherever anywhere you like Very they're pretty cool. fun this is a big old table made by my friend Jim, who goes by the Lumbering Behemoth. So he mm. makes these rad plant stands. This is black walnut, and uh, I just use it for display, but it's for sale. And that's just something we worked out. So I have Very a, cool. in the works, he's going to make a little mobile freestanding on casters uh, vinyl holder. And I want to do two versions, like an inexpensive one and a really nice like black walnut mm -hmm. one for those fancy people that need that stuff. Because I'm going to start selling used vinyl here too. Oh, nice. Yep, 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 yep. So this place is going to just be a real chill vibe. Plants, 
music t-shirts random stuff i'll probably random incorporate stuff. some thrift items because i've worked in thrift stores before mm -hmm. and i've worked in record stores and that's what i like so instead of like getting like super nice hand pruners and you know watering cans and all the you know i'm a plant star i gotta get all the little yeah. tchotchkes like yeah yeah just come get your plants and uh, taking everything you know and love and putting it under one roof absolutely i like it you've got the turntables here like yeah 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 i feel like things are happening uh we're trying All right, so this section back here though is like the beginning of my low light, medium light, kind of tough plant section. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of this stuff doesn't require a lot of super strong sun. Uh, these like it a little brighter, but this place I rotate things around. But when folks walk in and they're just like, I got no light, I can't have any plants. I'm like, you oh, can have Oh, but you can. Yeah. That's pretty. You again picked up the only I rough know. looking plant oh. in here. I mean, I, did, you planned that out, didn't you? <laughs> I do it every time. I'm just kidding. How about These are one? Calatheus and they're, they're pretty finicky, not super easy. They want pretty. water that has no chlorine in them. Oh, yes. Yeah. So yes, when yes, I do yes. talk about the tough, awesome section, I do say, with the exception of these with three the Calatheus exception. and these Calatheus. But yeah, like a bamboo palm doesn't want any sun on it. Parlor palms. This is an aglionema, which is called a, commonly called a Chinese evergreen, and so are these. They just don't like cold drafts, but they can be way back here. The window's like way over mm -hmm. there. This little bit of indirect uh, bright light from the bulbs is definitely helpful, but they're fine back here. Micro ZZ plants, um, a couple Dracaenas, and of course, Sansevarias, which are all over the shop. Yes. Yeah. And you've got some more wall space, more Absolutely. wall space than you had in the other place. Absolutely. Too. I work with a small business called System Systems. My friend Derek is an old roommate of mine and he makes frames and collects posters and kind of flips them online mm -hmm. as sort of a side job. And he saw all this wall space and was like, can I bring down some art and we sell it and you get a cut. So that's been working out. We've sold hey, three nice. pieces so far. Yeah, it, it's it's just for me wanting to have a lot of extra just different stuff in here and i have the wall space like why not yeah it serves as decor and income of course so, i of mean course. you can't go wrong with that and this room is still being worked on but at about 4 30 3 45 ish depending on the time of year sun just starts flooding back here which is why i put that blue and that uh it's called cedar white cedar mm -hmm. so right now it's just sort of back stock like these herbs would usually be out front on the sidewalk mm -hmm. This looks very uh, classroomy, lab stuff. Yeah. You could it, do some teaching and demos. I'm on. thinking about having a lumbering behemoth make me one nice table that just sits in the middle that has things on it all the time, yeah. except for when there's a class back here, because yeah. I do want to get into that. Very cool. So last time we chatted, we discussed a very cool planting technique. Yeah. Co Co kokedama. Co kokedama. 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 I've been very intrigued by this. So explain it for, explain what it is. We're going to take a plant. Ooh, here's this plant. We're going to pull it out of its pot. We're going to loosen up all the soil to where there's just some roots dangling down. Over here, I'm going to have a little like mud pie factory in okay. a sense, you know, like some it. nice soil that's going to have certain things in it to where when we add water, we're going to make these little mud balls. Mm -hmm. You should be able to set the mud ball down and tap it and it stays together. That's a good one. And then over here, we're going to have some preserved moss. So are you going to show us yeah. today yeah, how gonna, to do it? We're going to make a kokodame for sure. Excellent. Okay, let's do it. All right. So we have some soil mix. Okay. We have a little bit of clay powder, which is going to act what? to help bind things. Okay. A little bit of horticultural charcoal, which will keep the soil nice and clean. And then this is a preserved moss product. This is dry. And before you use it, get a little tub of water and you let it soak okay. to where it becomes very pliable and it rehydrates and becomes all fluffy and amazing again. So I always try to get some of this ready. I feel like that's going to be about the size. Going to make a little mud pall. So okay. we're going to get a little soil. We're going to add a little bit of hort charcoal, a little bit of clay powder. We'll go ahead and use kind of a lot. Why not? You can use a kitty litter also. 
Don't buy the fancy uh, stuff. Get the old school clay kitty litter. Now, did you already pre-moisten everything? Um, there was a little piece of wet, wet, uh, a little pile of wet mud, so to speak, that was started, but it wasn't big enough for this particular plant we're going to okay. do. So imagine that this is dry. We're just and gonna how much, how soaked do you want to get it? Are we talking mud pies? I start pretty soaked because what we're going to do is squeeze it to where water is coming out. Okay. Ideally, I'm going to okay. put that right there. And I usually don't know until I give it a few little turns whether that's good Very or not. Very nice. Yeah, we're about there. Now, how did you get into this originally? Uh, working at Sprout Home. Yeah. We made them from time to time. Yeah. And again, we didn't make them all the time. We'd make like 15 or 20, have them around, they'd sell out. People would really like them. And mm -hmm. it was just like, um, we're super busy. Sorry, we don't have time. Mud ball. Mud ball. Yeah. You know, I have a six-year-old at home that you could totally hire. We could start a little production for line. For this specific job, I, he would be great. So ideally, you're going to set that down. And if you give it some taps and it stays intact, mm -hmm. it's usually good to go. All right. So I'm going to, I have already grabbed this Chefalera Arbacola, I believe is how we say it. I just call it a little chef. You're going to remove a lot of the, some people will have a little bucket of water and they'll dip this and get all the soil out. We're good. We're good. And if there were tons of roots and you didn't want to mess around, like if you're like, ah, I feel like this is too big, you can always trim roots. That's mm -hmm. also a good time to look for any damaged roots to trim out. This is going to be fine. Okay. All right. I'm going to crack this open. Merp. Doesn't have to be a perfect in half kind of vibe. Some people will make little. Mm -hmm. Like if you have more clay, you can, you know, really make this like kind of a, a kind of, uh, I don't know the percentages, but it will act more like clay. I don't really like to do that. So I'm making one little divot. Okay. And I just kind of squeeze that little buddy right up in there like so. And this part is a little tricky because it, it definitely doesn't want to necessarily bond right together. So you sometimes got to play with it for a little bit. It's looking cool already. Yeah. Now, when you water, mm -hmm. do you dunk it? Do you I mist dunk. it? Do I you, dunk. You dunk? There's people, depending on the type of plant and how often you feel like it's going to need water, and you'll be able to tell by just lifting it up and be like, oh, it's super bone dry. Let me just set this in a little bowl of water uh -huh. for 20 minutes, try to get everything uh, hydrated again. And then back up it goes. And back up. Nice. All right. So we're going to kind of just work with this. I could set this down and give it the old tap, but it, you know, it has more, it's more likely to kind of fall apart on me. So I'm just going to gently do this and then check this move out. A little bucket of water to kind of clean the hands a little. <laughs> Oops. All right. Then we're going to grab a nice big piece of moss. I usually like to kind of put it around the bottom and you're just trying to encase it and it's not perfect. And this part is a little tricky. And if you're like, oh, that's not going to cover that, you've got another little piece around. You just sort of patch Spread it in there. That right in there. All right. So this doesn't look like a ball yet. And I said that was tricky, but here comes the actual tricky part. Okay. So I always have a few little pre-cut long lengths of twine. Twine, like a natural jute, can fall apart, you know, if it's in bright, bright sunlight mm -hmm. and getting dunked in water a lot. So sometimes you have to refresh it with a little bit of extra twine. You can also use um, fishing lure or fishing line, pardon me. Fishing line, okay. Yeah, like I've got some, the stuff my plants are hanging on is 25 pound test, um, which is more than what you need here. So I just go kind of around. So what's the lifespan of one of these? Oh, uh, people still send me pictures of ones that they had when I was making these when I was located in Furniture Lounge which is like 2013, 2014. Really? Yeah, because you can start putting a little bit of plant food in the water when you soak it. I was going to ask about that too. Yeah, so I'm just kind of trying to go around. You want to go up near the, the base of things. Oops, like so. That is so cool. Yeah, this could be a little longer. So this one, since the string is not long, I'm not going to make it a hanging one. And I'll show you what I mean by that in just a sec. So, oops, that's that. We could do, this could use another probably foot of twine to really go around a little mm -hmm. bit more. 
but for all purposes, or I didn't say that right, but this is <laughs> what we're going to rock right now. And that can literally be just set on a shelf. Yeah, you can get a cute little dish or a bowl. I love that. How cool is that? Kokodame. I'm going to show you my. Would you like to see some finished ones? You yes, want me to set them yes, here? yes. Very Sorry, cool. you said I wasn't. I just want to see how heavy it is. Yeah, feel free. Man, that's cool. And you said you don't have to necessarily buy this. You can go out and harvest. Yeah, if you've got outdoors. a spot. It grows in urban environments pretty well. Mm -hmm. You can usually walk around. This is a parlor palm or a Neantha bella palm. So that's a low light plant. Doesn't need to be near the windows. These like it a little brighter. A couple shuffleras. That's just sort of a little display idea. Very nice. And then I did a uh, corkscrew this morning. So you can definitely oh, cool. plan out your twine to where you leave some. So after you tie your little knot, make a little loop on to top. Turn that into a hanging. Then point. it's just hanging, and you can hang it off of a wall, like, and it will just kind of nest against the wall or float in the air, whatever you like. Wow, very cool. That is Kokodame at Plant Mode. It's always a pleasure to hang out with Mathis at Plant Mode, and thank you so much for watching. We're out of time. If you've got questions for our panelists, send them in to yourgarden at gmail.com, or you can look us up on Facebook, and we'll try to get those questions answered for you. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Good night. <laughs>